In this video, I'll uncover the superfoods that you need to eat in order to improve your heart health. When many people consider how they're going to improve their health, they tend to think about things like, how can I lose some weight? How can I get rid of some of that belly fat? How can I gain some muscle? Or even how can I clear my skin up? But the thing that most people aren't thinking about is, well, how can I improve my organ health? And how can I improve that organ that is beating 24-7 to keep me alive? How can I improve its health? Because let me tell you, modern day living has caused some major issues for your overall heart health. The disease statistics when we look at heart health is just through the roof. And so that's why in this video, we're going to talk about how you can improve your heart health. We're going to talk about superfoods for heart health and how to improve heart health with everyday foods. So in this video, stick around to the end. We're going to teach you everything you need to know about the foods you should eat to improve heart health. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification and join our notification community. That way it can help you excel your health and your life. Let's go ahead and first talk about some interesting heart facts because it's always good to put some context behind this whole scenario and really understand the situation that's at hand when it comes to really poor heart health. A couple good things about the heart and a couple bad things about the overall heart health statistics out there. First of all, a couple really good interesting things are first of all, your heart's going to beat about 115,000 times on a daily basis. That's pretty incredible. 24-7 working to keep you alive. Make sure you're helping to keep it alive. Also, it's going to pump 2,000 gallons of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Okay, you can imagine how much effort that takes and how hard the heart has to be working in order to accomplish this task. Incredible. Laughing is good for the heart. One of the things that a lot of science has shown that like decreasing stress, laughing, having a good time with your friends, you know, having good relationships is always good for your heart because stress is a major killer and a major and, and majorly destructive when it comes to your overall heart health. Um, your heart is typically the size of your fist, okay? Just a kind of an interesting fact there. Um, the beating noise from your heart is coming from the valves that are opening and snapping shut. And then the heart is an electrically controlled system. There's constantly this, you know, electrical impulse that's, you know, sent through the heart, which is causing the heart to contract and relax and, you know, the valves to open. It's really interesting how the whole thing works, but one of the things that we really need to focus on is how we improve that heart health. Now, a couple of bad things that we need to know about heart health, because if you know what the general population is facing in the way of heart health, then you can work to improve yours. 610,000 people per year die from a heart-related issue. It's the leading cause of death for both men and women. Men typically have a greater chance of heart-related issues, but both men and women, leading cause of death is, is gonna be a heart-related issue. 735,000 heart attacks per year. Okay, that's an incredible amount. And you know, when we talk about these heart-related issues, this isn't happening in a 95-year-old, 100-year-old. This is, you know, we're talking about heart-related issues in young individuals, people who are in their you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, having these issues. Every 40 seconds, somebody dies from a heart-related issue. And then also it costs $21 billion yearly. You know, when we look at just healthcare in general and the discussion around it, one of the major things that's constantly bankrupting the system is the fact that so many people have problems like diabetes, insulin resistance, heart-related issues. So what we want to do is work to improve our heart health. Let's dive into some of the foods that we need to know about. Let's talk about fatty fish first, because fatty fish are really powerful for overall heart health. Now, if you watch my channel, you've heard me talk about this before. We use the acronym SMASHFISH, and SMASHFISH refers to salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. These are all really great fish that are loaded with omega-3s, and they're also loaded with DHA. Now, if you're someone who's gonna say, well, I don't like fish, then you need to at least supplement with a DHA, an omega-3, a good fatty acid, in order to improve your heart health. What are some of the benefits it offers? Well, it's gonna help decrease inflammation, which is incredibly powerful because, you know, when we look at the inflammatory issue in the cardiovascular system, it's one of the reasons that many people start to form clots, okay? You get that oxidation of the cholesterol. So decreased inflammation, decreased triglycerides, lower blood pressure, major issue today. Many people have blood pressure issues. Reduced, it reduces the risk of stroke and also decreases total cholesterol. All very powerful for improving heart health. Let's move on to walnuts, okay? Walnuts is something that you can easily fit into your daily routine, have some at lunch, have them as a snack in your vehicle, whatever it is. 
So walnut nutrition, loaded with manganese, copper, lots of good dietary fiber, but most importantly, a lot of good healthy fats and micronutrients within the walnuts. Here's some of the benefits it has to offer. It's gonna protect against heart disease, right? Heart disease is a major issue, killing so many people out there. It's gonna help reduce that bad cholesterol, what typ the typical medical community refers to as the LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. It's gonna help reduce that, decrease oxidative stress, decrease inflammation and help lower blood pressure. Okay, so walnuts, easy to implement. Make sure that you're having some walnuts. Um, leafy green vegetables. Now we all know we're supposed to eat our vegetables, but the truth is, is many people are not. So let's first of all talk about leafy vegetables and how um, it can help improve your heart health. And then we'll talk about how to incorporate more into your daily routine. So the veggie nutrition. First of all, lots of micronutrients, right? Deep down, we know a lot of this stuff. Micronutrient rich, rich in vitamin K and A, folate, magnesium, potassium, which is incredibly important for lowering, lowering blood pressure, along with magnesium and also iron. So what are some of the benefits that it has to offer? It's gonna help fight these free radicals. We wanna fight free radicals. We wanna make sure that we're getting rid of that oxidative stress. It's gonna protect the arteries, right? Because we have to keep the arteries healthy as well. One of the things that starts to just break down with cardiovascular health is the arterial um, structure. So we wanna make sure we're working to improve these arteries in their health, lowers the risk of heart disease, and decreases that oxidative stress. Now, if you're someone who hates just eating salads all the time, one of the things you can do is make good green smoothies, okay? It's one of the things I love to do. You can get a green smoothie, put lots of um, uh, berries in it, which we'll talk about in just a moment. We're gonna put lots of different things like spinach, kale, lots of good green, leafy greens in there, and you can make a really delicious heart-healthy smoothie and get your greens in that way. Now, the other thing is, is I personally like having a big salad at lunch. That's how I get my leafy greens. In. I go in intermittent fast at lunch. I'll have a nice big salad with uh, lots of things like even walnuts on it. And then from there, you know, you got your greens in, you got some you know, really good, powerful micronutrients that are going to help improve heart health. So if you're someone who just doesn't like to have a lot of salads, go and make good green smoothies to incorporate more in. Now, next here is chocolate. Now, you once again, I don't need to ever really push people to eat chocolate. They're definitely going to just like love this presentation now because chocolate is really incredible, not only good tasting, but incredible for your overall health. We recently talked about chocolate, how it improves your brain health. We'll talk about how it improves your heart health, but we'll also talk about getting the proper chocolate. Chocolate nutrition loaded with antioxidants, caffeine, lots of good flavonoids in it, and now the thing is we wanna use a high cocoa dark chocolate, okay? So we aren't talking about Hershey's bar here. We're not talking about the Snickers bars with chocolate in it. We're talking about going to the store, getting a good organic cho chocolate that specifically says like 80, 90% chocolate. And so we want to make sure that we're getting that kind of chocolate. What are the benefits? It's going to help lower blood pressure, reduce inflammation. In the uh, British Medical Journal, basically what they found is they looked at people who ate a lot of uh, chocolate and people who ate very little. What they found is that people who ate a lot of chocolate had a 37% reduction in cardiovascular disease and a 29% reduction in stroke. Okay, so once again, this is the good quality stuff. This is not your high sugar Hershey's bars. So let's talk about next berries. Okay, because berries are really important for improving our overall health. I talk about berries all the time, right? Because, you know, whether it's insulin resistance, brain health, these berries are loaded with so many good nutrients that have, you know, many benefits, which we'll get to. First of all, we want to stick to berries because they're going to be uh, low glycemic index. They have a low amount of natural sugars in them, but they also are the most nutrient dense fruits. They're high in antioxidants. When we look at blueberries, it's going to have the pterostilbene in it, which is going to help reduce plaque in the arteries. Very important. Uh, then we look at raspberries and strawberries, and it has something called elagic acid, which is going to be really powerful for stopping oxidation of LDLs, right? The laying of that cholesterol in the arteries, causing those clots, the, the blockages. And then we have the anthocyanins, which come from cherries and strawberries, and that's going to really help decrease inflammation, which is very important, right? That oxidation and inflammation, they're highly related. And so eating some of these particular fruits, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, cherries, they're going to be really great for overall heart health. They're also going to help stock, stop the oxidative damage and lower your blood pressure, okay? So add in lots of berries because they're really good for you. Not only your heart health, but specifically your heart health. Next year is going to be avocados. Now, avocado nutrition, we're gonna be looking at lots of good quality fats here, mono, monounsaturated fats that are going to also be rich in potassium, right? So many people think all the time, well, eat a banana if you wanna get lots of potassium, which is very good for your heart. But the truth is, is that avocados have way more potassium. 
And so they're also going to be rich in vitamin E and vitamin K. What are some of the benefits they have to offer? It's going to help reduce cholesterol, reduce the risk of heart attacks and heart disease, and also decrease your blood pressure, okay? We always want to remember that potassium helps bring down the blood pressure, and then avocado oil can be used here, okay? So if you're someone who maybe wants to increase your intake of the avocado, you can use the avocado oil, which has all these same great benefits, and so utilize that. You can use it as a finishing oil. Avocado oil can actually take a really high heat too, so you can even cook like eggs or something with it as well. So avocados are great. Olive oil is next on our list here. Now, olive oil has been highly researched when it comes to overall heart health, now let's look at olive oil nutrition. First of all, it's gonna be rich in healthy fats, just like that avocado was. 14% saturated fats, 11% polyunsaturated, and then 73% monounsaturated fats, and loaded with tons of good antioxidants that have an enormous amount of benefits when it comes to your heart health. This is one of the reasons the Mediterranean diet is so powerful, so popular when it comes to improving your health, is because it includes a lot of olives, a lot of olive oil, that kind of thing. It's gonna help reduce inflammation, reduce blood pressure, reduce oxidative stress, and it's associated with 48% lower risk of heart disease. Now, the thing is that we want to make sure that we're using the good stuff, okay? When we look at olive oil in general, of course, there's just like anything, right? If it's supplementation, whatever it is, there's the cheap stuff, there's the good stuff. When we look at olive oil, we want to get the extra virgin olive oil because basically the stuff that's highly processed, it removes a lot of the antioxidants, it removes a lot of the nutritional benefits that are in the olive oil that helps decrease inflammation and that kind of thing. So, we also want to consider when using olive oil, we typically want to use it as a finishing oil. You can put it as a finishing oil on your salad, on your meats, that kind of thing, but typically use it as a finishing oil for best results when it comes to heart health. Now, green tea is next on our list. Now, green tea has tons of benefits. I mean, weight loss, uh, brain health, I mean, you name it, really powerful stuff here. But let's talk about how it specifically can heart, help your heart health. Green tea nutrition. Lots of antioxidants, caffeine, polyphenols, and catechins, which are one of the very specific nutrients in it that helps with the heart health. It's gonna help lower cholesterol, it's gonna help lower fibrinogen, and that's gonna be clots and strokes, okay? So we talk about this fibrinogen within the um, arteries, within the blood. Essentially, if that starts to get out of control, it gets too high, then you're gonna have a greater risk of clots and strokes. The catechins actually help lower that fibrinogen. Decreases coronary artery disease, improve, improves blood vessels health, and then also reduces inflammation, which is all very important when we talk about our cardiovascular health. So with green tea, you can either supplement with it or you can actually just make some good green tea. You can drink it first thing in the morning, the afternoon. It has caffeine in it, so you're gonna to wanna to stay away from it at night, but green tea is powerful for overall heart health. Now let's talk about garlic, okay? Because, I mean, I mean, most people love garlic. I'm a big fan of garlic, and we have to make sure that we incorporate garlic in on the regular in order to get the benefits, but we also have, a, have to really talk about utilizing it properly. Garlic nutrition is gonna have the allicin and also the antioxidants in them. Now the allicin is specific is very unique when it comes to garlic and heart health because what it does is it helps prevent platelets from sticking together. Okay, we talked about fibrinogen, we talked about clots, strokes, all this type of thing. It's the same concept. We don't want these platelets sticking together. This allicin, which is a nutrient within garlic, helps stop that, which also goes and prevents coagulation and also lowers your blood pressure. Now, the other thing is that when we use garlic, what they found is that using raw garlic and crushing it was the best method in order to get the best results. Now, um, you know, there's garlic powder, there's all these different forms, but using it fresh, using it raw, and not just throwing in like big chunks or whole cloves. We actually want to go and crush it because it helps us break it up so that you can get the most out of the nutrition from the garlic. So these are the top foods that you can eat in order to improve your heart health. Let me know in the comment section below which ones you're using. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Now, if you wanna take this a step further, you want to take your heart health the step further. What you wanna do is you wanna watch this video right over here how I talk about the proper nutrition, the proper supplementation, things that you need to take in order to drastically improve your heart health. Very powerful, don't miss it it blows my mind because in most cases, nobody told them. So maybe you'll hear it here first. Now, first uh, nutrient that we're gonna talk about here 